you all received telegrams from Augustus Larkin um, thanking you for your volunteer voluntary participation in the archaeological dig he's leading in Peru. Um, he's asked each one of you to meet him at Bar Cardano in Lima, Peru um, on Friday, March 18th at 7 p.m. Bar Cardano is a relatively simple um, restaurant. Wooden paneled walls, tiled floor. It's not overly crowded, but there are definitely lots of people there. Um, mostly eating seafood, some eating like uh, roasted and uh, smoked uh, porks, that sort of thing. Quick question. Yes. We have Peruvian money on us. Um, I would assume you have a couple dollars Peruvian money. Uh, do I have my ethno bottle at least? Yes, you have all your personal possessions. Ethno bottle drinking time. Alright, um, so who would like to arrive first? Oh, me, 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 me. Okay. <laughs> In the uh, entrance of the of Bar Cardano walks a relatively large, muscular man. Frank, you can describe yourself. Oh, yay. Today he is wearing a purple suit with a purple hat with a green undershirt. As it, and as he enters, he is quite clearly smoking. Lucky strikes, if you ask. Alright. Um, the waiter comes up to you and, like, Hello, may I help you? Why, yes, you can. Do you know a guy, um, Juran Akash Tuotu Distrito de Lima, as he pulls out of a telegram reading it. That's the address of this place. Ah, I thought it was some sort of language, whatever. Okay, so, um, apparently I got a room here from a Mr. Larkin. Oh, Mr. Larkin, um, he is here in the restaurant. Um, I can show you to his table. Ah, yeah, that'd be appreciated, fella. Right, as, he, he, as he takes out a cigarette and gives a little smoke, putting it back in. Yeah, the waiter doesn't care. He just leads you through the little restaurant area um, towards the back, back left corner. Back left corner of the room is a little bit inch more in shadow, um, and there's a table there with three people sitting at it. There is a light-skinned man with uh, rustled hair, a more uh, Hispanic-looking man, dark hair and black eyes, and an African-American man with white eyes and a big smile. The light-skinned man... So this man, is the Larkin table as I turn towards the waiter. The light-skinned man stands up, smiles. I'm Augustus Larkin. Nice to meet you. Nice to meet you. I'm Frank McLachlan. Uh, these is are is my it? compatriots, Luis de Mendoza. And he points to the Hispanic. And then he points to the African-American man. And an American who just joined the name of Jesse Hughes. And the African-American man stands up, smiling. Says, Jesse Hughes, nice to meet you. Nice to meet you. Shakes her hand. Nice to meet you too, fellas. As he, sit, as he sits down at the table, taking off his hat. Alright. Uh, and who would our next visitor be? The next arrival? I mean... Uh, anybody else want to go before me? Let's see. <laughs> yeah, I go, I go uh, before you, if it's alright. Alright. Alright, so 
Aiden, you walk into the door of Bar Cardano. You can describe yourself. Well, so uh, Aiden uh, is, vis- is invisibly an uh, old man uh, of white skin. Uh, he's covered in a full beard, though it's uh, trimmed shortly. Um, he's got some uh, some uh, some rings around his eyes, like uh, like he hasn't slept in uh, in the last six months or so. Uh, and overall, his uh, his mood seems to be very uh, very very grim. Or uh, yeah, it, it seems like he doesn't enjoy much from. His- all right. Um, as you come in, there's nobody at the door yet, but a waiter is approaching. Is, may I help you? Waiter asks. Hey, uh, yeah, greetings. Um, I am looking for a man uh, named uh, Larkin. Uh, is, he, is he somewhere here? Oh, yes, he's back there in the corner. Let me show you. And he oh, leads yeah. you Thank you. to the back of the room. You, He leads you to a table, slightly in shadow, but there is a large, muscular man there, sitting down, with his back face towards you. Um, there is a light-skinned man with tussled, uh, sandy brown hair. Um, a Hispanic man, black eyes, sitting there, arms crossed, not even giving you any attention. And an African-American man with big eyes and a big smile, who jumps up immediately and says, my name is Jesse Hughes. Nice to meet you. Nice to meet you. Yeah, yeah. No, nice to meet you, Mr. Uh, Hughes. Uh, Aiden is my name. Aiden Felik. Aiden, nice to meet you. Yes, these are... Uh, that's Augustus Larkin. Um, the man with the tussled hair. Waves ah, over at you. Oh, you're Mr. And the Hispanic man sitting in the middle is introduced as Luis de Mendoza. Mr. de Mendoza? And he, uh, he nods to him. All right. Nods. Um. Uh, who's uh, who's this man here? Uh, is he name with you, Frank. Mr. Larkin? Frank. Frank. Hello. My name is Aiden. And uh, he reaches out his right hand to you. Frank turns around and accepts the handshake. Right. Uh, would you mind making me some some space here? Sure. Uh, I'll go get an extra hand. chair. As Frank gets up and goes to get an extra chair. Thank you. Alright, Jonas, you're walking in as a waiter is approaching, looking a little tired, as if he's just been walking back and forth across the same room a couple times. And you can introduce yourself and describe yourself. Uh, well, Jonas is um, not quite a young-looking person. It doesn't have a very good appearance, but, you know, I'm stopping really. Um, pretty straightforward, really. Just normal person. Doctor. Mm-hmm. Alright. The waiter stops in front of you. May I help you? Uh, hello. I'm looking for, a Augustus Larkin. <sighs> Size. This way. And he just turns and walks right back across the room. Then you to the back corner. He shows you to a table. Um, There are five people sitting around it. You see a light-skinned man with uh, tussled hair. Um, Sitting next to him is an Hispanic man with his arms crossed. And on the last person sitting in that side of the table is this African-American man with a big old goofy smile on his face. Quite sitting here. with their backs to you is a big muscular man. And at the other chair is a older uh, man. Neither who would have looked at you. Um, the pale man stands up. And because of Slarkin, nice to meet you. And he just sends his hand. Jonas Lot Hartley, nice to meet you. I accept the harsh handshake. 
Uh, these are my uh, companions. This is Luis de Mendoza. He's a local guide and assistant. And that man over there is Jesse Hughes. He has been, he's an American cultist who has come to study Peru and has signed on with this expedition. Oh, wow. Well. Eh, I've got yes. my own things. <laughs> right, um, he points to the muscular man. That is Frank. Okay. The older man says, "That is Aiden." Nice to meet you, young man. Nice to meet you too, um, Frank. Is it Aiden? It's Aiden. That's my name. Yeah, I'll leave that. I get confused a lot. Sorry. <laughs> um, yeah. Uh, confusion. <laughs> Jonas Dyxi is broken. <laughs> um, uh, I reach out to a handshake to um, Aiden. Nice to meet you. Yeah, and uh, he accepts the handshake. Um, nice to meet you. Um, do we have another seat, Mr. Waiter, if he's still here? The waiter nods and goes to bring a chair over. I think that's the last of you for now. Thank you again for uh, joining me on my expedition. It's been quite a roller coaster. Nobody around here really wants to. They all have their beliefs about this place, but you know, we do what we do. We can do. Yeah, but uh, what hasn't been very much clear to me, if uh, if I'm being honest with you. Um, uh, why did you contact us? I mean, obviously we are uh, all from different backgrounds. I mean, you know, all different age groups. I, for myself, uh, am almost at, at 60 with well, this man, and uh, he points to John. I don't know, you look, you look like you uh, haven't even passed the year 30, if I'm being honest with you. You would be correct. Is there a reason for this? Uh, do we qualify in something, or...? Oh, yes. Um, I was looking for your specifics. Specific kind of people. And Continue. you are, were all so kind as to come down here, really to the middle of nowhere. Uh, right back. So, I'm going to tell you a little bit about myself and what we're doing, this expedition. The uh, destination is a pyramid in the jungle, a little far south, a couple days south of here, um, near the village of Puno. I was given uh, directions to this place by an alpaca farmer in the highlands of Peru. But the people wouldn't go there. They wouldn't investigate. They have their superstitions and their beliefs about the place. What exactly is the pyramid? Well, it's a pyramid. You know, yeah. ancient yeah. stone structure holding untold treasures of gold and silver and precious jewels. Behind a lot of traps, let me guess. I wouldn't say that. The Peruvians were not so fond of traps. That's Egyptians. Yeah. So how will we be getting down there? What's our transport? Oh. I have hired three trucks to take us from Lima along the coast up to Puno. In Puno, we will buy some mules and take them to the pyramid. There's no roads. Yeah, Puno. All right. And I'm guessing we're 
going to be going tomorrow? No, the um, trucks will be coming before dawn on Monday morning. So you have the weekend to just get what yourself... Day is it, what day is it today out of character? Uh, it's Friday. All right. So you have uh, a couple okay. of days to just get used to the area. If there's anything you want to do before we leave, but nothing can delay our departure. It will we take us. All right. Any specific items, say, I don't know, uh, uh, rope or like equipment. Well, I have already bought many supplies for this expedition. Um, if there's anything else you require, I would suggest you buy it in the next couple of days, and I will reimburse you should you keep the receipts. Okay. Uh, quick question, Keeper, yes. our character. Yes. Do we speak Peru? Uh, I can't Peruvian. Uh. Unless it says on your character sheet, then you do not. Oh, so we can't speak to the natives that well, can we? Nope, not unless they're also able to speak in English. Or That's any other thing. native language that you speak. Uh, wait, can I add Welsh to my one since uh, my birthplace was Wales? Yeah. Yeah. What's the base? Um, the base is one, I believe. Wait. Oh, cool. Uh, so why do we need to do anything in here? Perhaps, like, I'm talking in character. Right? Well, so. you know, I realistically we need. There are many artifacts. I expect us to be. Recovering from the pyramid, for example, and he reaches into his pocket and he pulls out these two um, items. Uh, one is a pendant that's in the form of a man holding two rods um, that's embellished with various rectangles. The other object is a golden cup carved with geometric patterns and circles inlaid with turquoise stones. Oh. Many treasures await. This is just a... I think it fits in my pocket. Yeah, got it. Um... Yeah, I think... I think we're fine. Uh... What can we do within these... Week, with the, within the weekend? I'm sure you can do some research into the area, into the history of the place, of the region. You know where the library is? Um, there's actually a university in Lima. And Even better. A museum of archaeology and anthropology at the university. It's the Universidad Nacional Mayor de San Marcos. Is it? Which way is it from here? Oh. Uh, well, actually, I can show you. I knew that bloody library uses would be in use. <laughs> Alright. So, if on the map... I just put you to... You guys are over at spot number two. University is spot number five. Do you mind if I put a token down just so I can keep in mind for later? Yeah, go ahead. Yeah, I can... Um, oh. I think one token is enough. How do you play? Yeah, you games? basically... You drag your um, character drop. from the character um, area... Oh, oh, I got it. And got onto it. the field. Alright, um... Is that Wilhelm in the picture? 
Borderlands. Ma from Sin City. Looks uh, similar, but okay. Do can, wait, Keeper. Um, yes. Is it night at the current moment? It's seven o'clock. Yes, yeah, so it's night. Uh, I'm talking in game. So, where's our accommodation, by chance? Uh, yes, I have reserved rooms for you. At. My birds are screeching. At. Okay. I have reserved some rooms for you at the Hotel Moray. Moray? Yes. Right. Uh, how close to the university is this? Oh, I'd say... Eight or ten blocks. Hmm. Well, I come from New York, so that's basically just a catch-up, so it's fine. Yeah. I'm pretty sure we can make that within yeah, ten minutes. Um, I how much money do I have enough to make the switch? Um, you have the equivalent of ten dollars. I so we can I order a, a drink? Yeah, uh, Larkin like... offers to pay for it. Oh, uh, sure, I guess. I'll take a free drink. And you are able to order uh, any kind of alcohol drink you wish. Hot drink. Fucking pays for it. Uh, I guess I'll get a coffee. Because okay. I guess I've done. Can I try to sneak some ethanol in there? <laughs> yes, you can. Uh, make a sleight of hand roll. Oh, I know. I'm gonna fail this. Um, I'm just gonna say that I'm putting some little flavor into it instead of actually, you know. Can I use persuade for that? Sure. Yes. I'm just gonna put some um, sweet, sweet flavor into it. All right. Um, you notice that Damon Doza's eyes narrow a little bit when you put the ethanol in your drink. Don't worry, it's just a bit of flavor. He doesn't say anything, but he just stares at you. Ah, shit. <laughs> and can you make a POW check? Just he alone? Let them alone. Alright. Um, as you're sitting there, you know, talking, uh, Larkin is sort of leaning back in his chair. Um, he yawns a little bit, and you can all make spot hidden ones. Uh, I'm gonna put one point, uh, never mind, I'm fine. <laughs> <laughs> Frank and Aiden, you both notice that Larkin appears to be um, sweating a little bit. Um, he's got bags under his eyes. And Frank, you also faintly notice, just hidden mostly by his shirt, the um, edge of a tattoo on his chest. Frank continues smoking and ignores his observations. Well, it is getting a little late for me. I continue drinking my um, ether laced um, drink. Myself and Luis de Mendoza have rooms at the Hotel Espana. That's where the trucks will meet us on Monday morning. Any particular 
particular reason uh, for why we are in separated hotels, or is it just because Espana is overbooked? Espana wouldn't take reservations without names. Ah, uh, of course. <laughs> Typical bureaucracy. Yeah, so until I knew who to put names in for, there was no way to make the reservation. And I didn't want to have you come all the way to Lima just to not actually have a room for you. Keep Say up. I did, but not have one. Yes. Uh, good. Like, do I have a doctor's bag on me or something? Yeah. Do I have a scalpel on it? Yes, you do. Can I use I, it as a weapon? I'm getting a little nervous here. If I get attacked, I'm using this. Oh. Okay. How much damage does that do? Um, it's a d4. Yay. I might not be able to die. <laughs> do we notice him doing anything? Um, make... Who are you looking at? Uh, it's, uh, Jonas. I mean, he's, do he's doing something, apparently. No. No? If I get attacked, I'm using my scalpel. <laughs> ah, if you get attacked, okay. Okay, then never mind. I thought you were kind of, you were kind of uh, piercing your, your finger and uh, getting some drops of blood into your drink. <laughs> no, okay. that, that's, okay. that's, not, that's not one of my manias. Right, my um, mania is Ethanol. Ethanol, so, sorry. Uh, Augustus Larkin excuses himself. And Luis de Mendoza follows silently. Jesse Hughes sits there and says, Come on, fellas. Please, join me for a drink. We can order that. Uh, sure. I guess I can get another drink. Yeah, right. Can I finish off my, um, my coffee? Unquote coffee. Alright, um, as once Larkin and De Mendoza are wild of earshot, Jesse Hughes leans forward at the table and says, So, how much of that do you believe? Excuse me. Come on, don't tell me you couldn't figure out how much bullshit he was serving you. Mr. Jesse, you're, you're pretty interesting. Uh, I'd like you to continue a bit. I want to try psychology on him. Okay. Make a psychology yeah. roll. You really shouldn't have let me put 70 on psychology. <laughs> yeah, he's, at as of right now, he's keeping something from you. Can I try... I don't want to try it, but I'm going to try it anyway. Can I try Persuade to see what he is hiding? You can try to talk him into revealing, so yeah. Let's try it. I know this is going to end up fumbling, but you know. Let's try oh, you know, that works. <laughs> hey, um... What do you mean he's a uh, bullshitting us, as you say? Listen, he never would have even done this, this whole expedition, if he didn't have to. My name is not Jesse Hughes. Now, that's just the name I gave Larkin to let, so that he wouldn't know who I really was. My name's Jackson Elias. Jackson Elias, you say? Yes. Does, it, um, does the name ring a bell to me? Um, make an intelligence roll. I'm going to try that too. Okay. You can all make intelligence rolls if you want to. Oh, that's a bit hard. I want to make sure. But okay, that works. Alright, um, you guys, aside from Frank, um, Aiden and. You guys know that. Jackson Elias is a pretty well-known author from America who specializes writing about 
various cults around the world. Wait he a sec. He had just released a book about cults, cult activity in parts of Southern Africa. Holy crap, you're the one. I'm, you're Jackson Elias. Yeah, Jackson Elias. And if Larkin knew that I was here, he would suspect I was researching another book, which I am. Eh, i keep quiet for you. You wouldn't research anything if it hasn't anything to do with the, with the cult activity. What brings you here in Peru? You might want to keep quiet. He yeah, looks around. I wouldn't, I wouldn't shout. I wouldn't shout that. I wouldn't shout there's that. nobody. There's nobody really paying attention. Like I said, there are some people in the restaurant, but they're all caught up in their own conversations, um, and nobody seems to be paying any special attention to your table. Um, Jackson lowers his voice a little bit to be more careful. And says, "I believe there's a death cult somewhere here in Peru." They call Death. themselves the Karasiri. And they've been playing on superstitions and legends that the Peruvian people have. Mm. So, I don't even know what they're... I don't know all the aspects of this cult Yeah, I'm still trying to get into my research but from what I've been able to learn. People who cross them die. Can I um, make a roll for... And you're implying Larkin is working for them. I think Larkin is involved, yeah. I Can definitely I have roll? a feeling that that uh, De Mendoza guy is involved. Can I make a roll to remember did. what the effects of ether is again? You can make a medicine roll. Oh, I was going to do... Uh, at pharmacy, but okay. Uh, medicine, 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 medicine. I can't find medicine. Mm. Never mind. Wow. And, you know, you just think that it's going to affect everybody differently. So, I'm not entirely sure what uh, okay. effects to expect. That his uh, Hispanic man, uh, he seemed quite clean to me. Did anyone else notice anything weird? Yeah. Really? What? Wait, what did you he, he again again? <laughs> <laughs> no, he was talking he about was the, uh, in the situation. Uh, yeah, it seemed a bit off, to be honest. Yeah, he's uh, uh he's an interesting character, isn't he? People warn me about him. That's how I found Larkin. People warn me about De Mendoza. He I said that he was. Just... People say that De Mendoza is a Karasiri. Oh, I forgot. Um, can I make an occult roll to see yes. if I recall any? Um, yes, you can. Thank um, From what you're you can kind of remember from uh, the occult research you have done in the past um, that Karasiri are some are suspected of being some form of vampire um, but they it might have just been a effect of the Spanish conquistadors coming to the New World um, and the, what they, how they treated the natives I think we should just play along for now, see what happens. You have more, um, or I should ask differently, um, you did get in contact with uh, other cults in the past, right? Yeah. How would you act upon it, now knowing that, uh, that there are cult activities here? What is your approach in doing this? Don't let them know what you're doing. You know, keep to the side as much as possible. Observe. And, you know, above all else, report them to the authorities as soon as they kill somebody. 
you got to understand that uh, I kind of lost my faith in authorities in the past. I'm actually a deputy down in, well, up in Paradise, Arizona. Well, it might be that the deputies in Arizona are quite differently, but from what I can tell, in the uh, BOI, uh, you know, yeah, the, the BOI, um, I was I was fired for uh, some similar activities because I behaved unprofessionally, and yeah. I'm basically a fired uh, federal authority because of something like this, and I want to avoid that, that mistake. In the That's very interesting. What cult were you after? Can I, if you don't mind me asking. And you see him pull out a little notebook and a pencil. It um in the. I, I know there was a, a, a site in New York, that's what I recall, but I never got really in touch with it. Um, I could just call a lead, I got a really hot lead, but this lead just led to uh, many uh, innocent arrests. Uh, many of my uh, fellow colleagues were injured. I feel like it's, it could really have been a false lead, but I don't really think so. There's, there's something off. Well, that's something to keep in mind for a later date, I suppose. He smiles. <sighs> so, if there's uh, anything you guys need me to help you with on this uh, expedition that Larkin's doing, this farce that he's doing, just let me know. Add a uh, Remember, my name's Jesse Hughes, in front of Larkin and De Mendoza. All right. He stands up, um, kind of fixes his tie a little bit. Says, in the morning, I would uh, suggest meeting with uh, Professor Sanchez at the museum. He might be able to shed a little bit of light on some of these aspects. Um, I'm supposed to meet with him in the morning at his office. Maybe you guys like to let, join me. I'm probably going to the university in the morning to um, investigate on things. You can do that. Um, personally, I'm pretty interested in the, uh, what was it again, the Archaeology Anthropology Museum. I think that's a good place to start in, in this kind of case. Oh, why? So that's the same place. Oh, okay. <laughs> no, never that, mind. That is, that's okay, the same follow. museum. <laughs> All right, okay. Then I follow. I follow. On the next step, come. Alright, um, I feel tired anyway, so I'm probably gonna go to bed. Alright. Um, yeah. I'll see you guys sometime. Okay. Um, Elias walks out ahead of you guys, um, and then moves in a separate direction. Um, as the three of you move together in a group, um, following some directions to get to the hotel. And you can all make spot hidden rolls. Keep scalp ready. I didn't mean to do that, but yeah, I on the first one I rolled critical, so no, oh, in extreme. Actually, it'd be an extreme because of zero. Yeah. Yeah, I'm a bit. All right. Um, once you guys are outside and you're walking, you kind of glance 
to the side and in an alley um you see a shadowy figure just standing there watching you walk away from the bar not saying anything just standing there leaning against the wall occasionally smoking a cigarette but his face is completely hidden you assume it's a male actor, actually. You can't even tell. Can I try um, and spot hidden to find more info? Um, you can't see any more mm -hmm. without walking closer. I mean, getting close could be risky. Do you guys want to get closer? <laughs> to that thing? Believe me, if uh, anything that um, you guy was talking about, uh, I wouldn't go near him. It would just lead to a lot of problems, especially for very inexperienced ones. Okay. Normal for now. We don't want to build suspicion right yet. Okay, let's go. Alright, um, you guys reach your hotel. It's a... Uh two-story uh, structure was like it had been like a, uh, a small house at one time that was converted into a hotel or maybe several houses that were combined into a hotel. Um, the uh, lady manning the desk is a short woman, a little older than all of you. She smiles, you introduce yourselves and she hands you uh, keys to Three separate rooms on the second floor. Okay, let's go. Frankie I... goes to his room. Same. I do the same. All right. Um, can you guys all make spot hidden rolls? How oh, success! I'm loving this. All right. If you succeed in your roles, you notice that the doors on the hotel are very thin. So thin that a little bit of force could probably break through the locks and break the door off the hinges. Is it me? Or these doors feel a bit thin. I don't know. I want to get a look. I know a thing at all about locks. As Frank walks over to his door, opens it, closes it, and then as soon as he ends it, and as soon as it's closed, he's going to expect a lock more of locksmith. Okay. Um. Yeah, you can tell that it's the uh, lock itself is pretty cheap. Um, the door itself is maybe a half inch thick, maybe an inch. Um, nothing that's too difficult to get through. It's barely a barrier of any kind. I just go to my room and I take a shot of ethanol. Because why? what is in the rooms? Um, they're inside the rooms. It's pretty Spartan. It's uh, just a bed and a small table and dresser. Uh, I'm going to put the table, table against the door, trying make it, trying to make it look like a little barricade, so the door would have more force against it. Okay. Uh, can I just? Like, lock the door and go to bed. Yeah. <laughs> like, lie in bed, but, like, still awake thinking for some reason. Yeah. I'm just gonna rack my brain on these, um, on these things. Alright, um, so... Frank takes his precautions. Um, Aiden and Jonas go to bed. Aiden never noticed anything wrong, odd about the door. 
Yeah, yeah this is correct. Just, you know, so intoxicated. I'm so hepped so up and uh, F and all, I think. Um, so the night pass moves on and soon enough, it's daytime. And it's Saturday morning. Um, sun's up. You hear people outside. Uh, Which because... floor are we on? You're on the second floor. So you oh. hear people through the window below you. I was going to jump out the window. This will be a bad idea, even on the ground floor. Yeah. Mm. Um, I, I won't make you roll intelligence to know that jumping out a window at best would break your legs. Yeah, I'm pretty sure I'm going to walk down. Yeah. Should have invested in climb like your friend Frank here. <laughs> well, excuse Don't worry, me, Frank I'm a token jump. healer. Excuse me, I'm the cool kids. Frank's going to walk down and go outside. Alright. Aiden, are you getting up and going outside as well? Or going down? <sighs> Probably uh, half an hour later than the others, but yes, I'm, I'm going outside. How can I get money? Um, on a Saturday, Not you'd have yes. to break the law. Yeah, there's no other really easy way to get money. Uh, how about I just work somewhere? At Saturday, in a foreign country, where you probably do not speak the language. Good point. Um, <laughs> oh, I don't know, I'm, I'm not hindering you. I mean, breaking the law. I have two characters that follow the law, so I mean... I don't think breaking the law is going to be a good idea. Yeah, one is a deputy and one is a former... Uh, old... let's say the old version of the FBI. Uh, kind of guy. So, yeah, that would be kind of a bad idea. <laughs> Alright, I just go up, um, go to the university, I guess. Okay. Um, it takes you guys, uh, walking roughly 20 minutes or so to get there. Um, so by the time you get there, it's about 10 in the morning. Um, most of the doors are closed and still locked. But there is a door that is open, um, kind of held open with a uh, like a brick or a heavy rock. And standing next to it is Jackson Elias. Morning. I walk up to him and say, "Yeah, nice uh, to meet you. Nice to see you again. Nice to see you again." Uh, I thought it isn't open now. Uh, well, the museum isn't open, but, uh, Patrick Sanchez is here. Oh. Uh, so he'll be able to talk to us, you know, you know, tell us a little bit about our stuff, and then, you know, once the museum opens, if you want to, you can take a look around, see some of the displays, whatever, uh, interests you. I just need to... I guess I'll just follow you for now, I guess. All right. He leads the way into a, um, like, relatively a thin corridor. Um, it's only about, like, five to six feet wide. Um, and it's full of cabinets bearing uh, various artifacts that aren't really all impressive for public consumption. At close to the close to the end of the hall, there is an office door that is ajar, and though you can see light coming in, uh, coming out of the office. And next to the uh, door is a plaque that says Sanchez. Can I can I do a spot hit and roll and looking around for just things that could be off? Yeah. That's a bit sad. 
everything seems normal to you. You're not familiar with the place, but it seems pretty normal. Elias walks to the door to the office, opens it, and walks in where you hear um, a deeper voice uh, with a Peruvian accent laughing. And, My friend, Mr. Elias, so good of you to come. And you guys are still in the hallway. We were all here? Yeah, you all went. Oh. Um. Is Frank or Aiden here? I would think so, yeah. Yeah. Uh. I just stay quiet and keep following. All right. Yeah. Um, you enter an office. There are a couple uh, tables it's close to another room. The walls are lined with shelves that are full of books um, and various uh, small artifacts. Uh, standing in the middle of the room is obviously the Jackson Elias in his tweed jacket and stereotypical reporter outfit. Um, standing right next to him is a slightly overweight uh, Peruvian man with a close uh, cut beard and short hair. He's wearing a white lab coat. This is Sanchez over the breast. Uh, oh, my friend, Mr. Elias, you have brought visitors. I'm just gonna, you know, choke. <laughs> Well, visitors is a uh, quite an understatement. I'd say we are uh, we, we are having an uh, acquaintance with um, Mr. Her with Elias. Uh, if I may introduce myself, uh, Mr. Felix. Uh, nice to meet you. Very nice to meet you. Welcome to my country. He shakes your hand. Okay, good. Yes, it's, uh, it's nice to be here. Uh, really. Quite different from the a very stressed out city as New York. Uh, yes, you know it's very. The weather is beautiful. It's not too humid out. The birds are singing. Anything you could want. Uh, my name's Jonas Hartley. Ah, yeah. very nice to meet you. Nice to meet you too. He shakes your hand. I'll, I accept the handshake. Place is very different from Bren. Yes, it is. No rain. Or <laughs> little rain. Yeah. So, my, Mr. Elias has told me that he's scheduled this appointment because of this whole uh, Kerosiri cult. Why are you here? Uh, I just came here because exploration, really. I've been studying medicine for so many years i need a break yeah, understandable and peru is a wonderful place to take a break mm -hmm. may as well have some adventure while i'm at it yes yes as long as your adventure is in peru and anything you find in peru stays in peru yep And he goes on to talk with Elias. Um, mostly about how he had tried to get to join uh, Larkin's various expeditions, um, but Larkin has always refused him. Um, and how Sanchez has been studying some of the artifacts that had previously been recovered at the site of the pyramid and recovered from the original conquistadors that discovered the pyramid. And he tells Elias that his assistant, Trinidad, 
is translating some of the conquistador memos and journals. That must be hard to do. <laughs> but she enjoys it, I suppose. Eh, uh, I guess as long as he enjoys it, I guess. I believe that when she graduates, that is what she wants to do. She wants to tra do the translations. You know, she knows several languages already. Yep. Kind of the same reason I went and said medicine. Yes. Uh, as I said, Mr. Elias wants to know more about the Kerasiri in this cult. Uh, the Kerasiri is a myth. A uh, story to frighten children, if you will. Told by mothers to keep their kids from wandering around at night. Like Pendle witches. Yes, exactly. It's it's a story. It's nothing. Uh, real. Nothing real. You know. Well, for to be honest, for an uh, unreal story, uh, there has been quite a rumor around. Are you talking about how the Kerasiri are vampires? Kandor, yes. yes. Well, they're not the uh, blood vampires that Europeans are so fond of. These, the Kerasiri are supposed to eat a person or suck the fat from them. It suck the fat out of them? Yes, yes, if you believe the stories. But as Isn't I have told... Bit? Uh, right. Mr. Elias before the Kerasiri, the conquistadors when they first came they used to kill natives and take the fat from their bodies to make candles and coat their armor so the idea of a fat sucking vampire really just us European Spaniard men yeah I'm pretty sure if they kept sucking fat, I'm pretty sure they'd be a bit, you know, obese. Exactly. So it's uh, it's less hemophilia and more like first degree cannibalism. Yes, that's probably how you would put it. <laughs> Nothing about the blood here. So, um,. There was artifacts or relics that were found in, in or near the pyramid. Uh, uh, is there any kind of way to see them? Well, most of the art, the larger artifacts are going to be on, are on display, and you can see them in the museum. Uh, All right. My assistant, she is going over some of the smaller ones. Some stuff in storage that really isn't for the public. You know. What what exactly defines them as uh, not being uh, visible to the public? Well, if the public knew that we had a twenty five pound gold bar in our storage, there could be it could be interesting. Yeah. So there's a 25 pound gold bar that was recovered from this pyramid. Well, it was the conquistadors broke it off and it was recovered from the conquistadors. Well, we're in a bit of trouble. Yes, and I apologize if my assistant would hurry up, you know, She'd be able to tell you all about what was going on and show you the the bar, or whatever else you want to see. I just Not know what's really need the so. base. He um, has a little watch on his wrist that he looks at. 
shaking his head and frowning. I'm sure she's been up all night. Yeah, students are uh, normally. She was so excited about it the other day when I spoke to her. You don't think something might have happened, per se? I don't think so. I mean... You know, of all the occult things? <sighs> it's a bit far-fetched, but... Yes, it's... You know, it's, it's the occult it, after all. They're taking advantage of a legend. Kind of a scummy thing to do. Yes, it. I agree. It is. So it puts a bad name on this whole area. Yeah. But no. As far as I know, she came in early this morning and has been in the basement all morning. Probably three Shouldn't hours at this point. Should we go down there, maybe? You can, I'm not going to stop you. Um, the door at the end of the hall is stairs that lead down to the basement. I'll be right back. If anybody wants to join me, it's fine. I walk down there and check down the basement, I guess. Is anybody else going? Well, if there are the other packs and the, the Red X, then Aiden most certainly will follow. Okay, yeah. The museum's not open yet, so if you want to see artifacts, they'd be down in the basement. In storage. Uh, can I do a roll to see if I see anything down there? Um, well, it's going to be pretty obvious when you head out into the hall outside of Sanchez's office. You go to, to the end of the hall where the stairs are, go down to the basement, and go down another hallway um, that's long, narrow, and not a lot of doors on it. Um, but there's one door relatively near where um, what you would expect to be under Sanchez's office. Mm -hmm. Just in case, be ready to put throw some fists. There is a... The door is open, um, but there's no light coming in, coming out from inside the room. Um, but you are keenly aware of a particularly foul stench. Ah, fuck. Can I... Do a medicine check to see if it's reminiscent of anything. Yeah. If anything dead. Um, if see. you I had to guess, it smells sort of like rotting meat that's been sitting out. Oh, fuck. Alright. Well, um, you might want to stay out of this. Unless, you know, you feel like seeing um, a bit of gore. If I learned anything from my work as a BOI agent, then I I need to uh, retreat from something that could get me a hot lead. So I'm, I will be following you. Can I check for matches if I got any? Or lights? Any sort of light source? Um, yeah. Right inside the door is a little... You find a switch it's by feeling around. There's the door frame. And the lights click I... on. Okay, everybody stay still. I flip the switch. Um, you're in the entrance to a pretty large storage room. Um, there are shelves uh, relatively everywhere. Um, they're full of bo like, shelves are got boxes on them. Um, but they all lead towards a like a workstation at the far I follow the trail to the work station. Right. Um, as you go, you start to notice the sound of buzzing flies. 
Maybe it's just maybe it's just food. Maybe it's just food. Pretty a lot of food, if you ask me. <sighs> yep. Let's just hope. It's not you go around the shelves and I need you to make a spot hidden roll. Both of us? Both of you. Dream. It would count as a success. Yeah. You both see the desiccated form of a young, maybe 20-something-year-old woman on the floor, um, flies buzzing around her. Oh. Clothes God. that seem too big for her frail body. Um, and she's laying there oh. with, you know, jacket on. Um, Do I have pants. any tools that could potentially help with um, anything? Um, your medical experience. You'd be able to just look at her and say that she's dead. Uh, There's no helping her anymore. Can I try pharmacy to see if there is anything in the blood or anything? Um, you can, yeah. I would say you're able to... Um, can I push that? <laughs> um, you can push it. How would you like to put? You mean, like... You're gonna study for longer? I guess, like, or try a different method. Okay, yeah, that's fine. Perfect. Alright, um, you look at the, the little amount of blood that there is. There's hardly any blood. Um, but it seems. Unaffected. There doesn't seem to be anything wrong with the blood. It seems normal. It seems the blood was not tainted, meaning it was not poison. Someone had to come down here and finish the job. So we are talking about the first degree murder here. Yes. Either somebody has stabbed her or shot her. I can't make it out. Uh, could I check on her? Uh, to see if there's any uh, stab wounds, shooting wounds, whatever. You can make, yeah, spy and roll. Um, searching like her over, you see what looks like a um, massive, almost circular gouge in her uh, upper chest near her throat. Um, looks like something was more attached to her than stabbed her. Um, and just, that was the physical cause of her death. I run back so up to the office and shout, uh, we have a problem. I make a dexterity <laughs> roll. A problem is quite an understatement. <laughs> Ah, shit, dexterity. My worst start. Oh, come on, you, you can't complain about a 50. Fair enough, yeah. <laughs> Alright, you um, rush up there, and you slam open the door, and start to shout that there's something wrong, um, and you see a hooded, black-clad figure standing in the middle of the room, holding, with his back turned to you, holding Dr. Sanchez by the throat, and lifting him up into the air with one hand. Oh, fuck. I run back down to Aiden. Aiden, 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 help me. What's wrong? What's wrong? I'm investigating. Black figure. Black figure holding person up by air. Oh. Alright. Uh... I would walk the same way, or I would run the same way as uh, he does, uh, with my Luger uh, bolster. Keeper. Yes. Can I try that um, other pharmacy skill to see if I can remember what Aoife does? Yeah. Because yeah. um, I need to figure out if any good effect. Um. 
Um, you would know that ether has some narcotic effects to it, um, giving a sort of a so you artificial say high type thing. You know, you would. So, I would be able to take more damage. Hmm. Do I want to take that risk? Yes. Yes. The answer to risk is always yes in Cthulhu. That will bring you further. <laughs> Throw me a drink of that ether and grip me my scalp. Alright. You drink ether. Um, you would get an additional 1 HP. Uh, tempor one temporary hit point. As you run upstairs, um, fought with Aiden, and back to Sanchez's office. I need you to both make... I have this in my notes. What kind of roll do you... Make listen rolls. How the fuck did I pass? It, you hear um, smashing sounds, um, a big thud, um, and somebody coughing before the sound of glass breaking. Stop! In the name of the law! Um, I, wish, uh, I, would, I would shout out if, if there's any response to this. Are you going to run into the off into the office and shout that, or are you yelling that from the hallway? While running, while running. All right, you don't hear any response. Yeah, I thought so. <laughs> but you do still hear uh, commotion and the sound of a struggle coming from the office. A few seconds later, you're at the door. And there's, from your, what you're able to see, just slightly into the room, um, you can see there's some broken pieces of furniture on the floor, and the light on, from the ceiling is broken, and the thing does a bulb is just swinging there, hanging from a wire. But you know, from where you are, you can't see um, Elias or Sanchez. Oh, blame me. Jonas, why didn't you stay in the room? Jonas? <laughs> uh, I kinda, you know, failed. Um, I'm a doctor, not a fighter. <sighs> well, you, you, have you seen the... a lot? Oh, sorry, have you seen Hughes somewhere? Uh, or the director of this, uh, of this museum, this university? I, I haven't seen anything that could potentially help us right now. Throw me a truck roll. <sighs> or a spot hidden. Blimey! Blimey. Yeah, right, I you, you guys can make spot hidden rolls as you make your way into the office. Uh, uh, just my just my luck. All right, Jonas, you both easily see um, lying in the middle of the room is Professor Sanchez. Um, he looks bruised, like he was tossed to the ground. Um, there's shattered furniture all around him, and at the far side of the room. Where there had been a window, it is now a broken pane of glass. Uh, There's no immediate window. sign of Jackson Elias. It must have went out the window. <sighs> we'll have to wait. We'll have to wait for Sanchez. Sanchez can wait. Right now, we have to save Eli Elias. Uh, can we both bolt it down? 
Oh, it's on the first floor. You don't have to. Oh, can we jump out the window? <laughs> yeah. Um, make a jump roll. I mean, do you want to before, before he does it, I was going to say, uh, I would, I would uh, grab you at the shoulder and uh, say, don't even try it. Personally, um, pursuing someone like this with that time, with that kind of time distance is probably not worth it. I don't care. That person is important, and I thought you were in. I thought you believed in a law. I do believe. We have, but a, chance. I... We have a chance in saving an innocent person. Due to the hypocratic oath, oath, I can't leave him. You can. You can follow. I will. And we will uh, let go of you. I will not hinder you. I just tell you from experience uh, when pursuing things, some when pursuing someone, uh, the time difference between him escaping and you following is very important. And right now, the time distance is uh, way too way too high. Fine. Can I at least check the body? Yeah. Can I check if he's live alive? Um, yes, you can, uh, check in, make a medicine roll. Ye. Yeah. In your medical experience, you would say that Professor Sanchez is indeed alive. Uh, a little I take beaten, out my doctor's bug. He's alive. I take out my doctor's bug and I attempt to stabilize him. Alright. Make a first aid roll. Can I push that? Yes, you can. <laughs> I have uh, hope. I have hope. And hope yes. He coughs a little bit as you finish, you know, uh, putting bandages on some of his cuts and applying styles to some of the bruises. You are not dying to the. He sort of groans and looks up at you. What's going on? I, uh, Elias, the, the the researcher downstairs is dead. What? Elias is gone. He's dead. He took Elias. Yes, I, mean, I seem concerned about Elias. I mean, he just tossed Elias against the wall. Uh, what, what do you mean, Elias? She's dead. What are you talking about? You can't be serious. She's not dead, right? Can I, just... can I try psychoanalysis? Yeah. How could you do this to me? <laughs> do you want to push it? <laughs> no. No, I don't want to mentally break this man. <laughs> I, at least, I, do you want to try? I mean, we can... The answer in Cthulhu normally would be yes. <laughs> He's hyperventilating and... Fuck it. Oh. Can I push it? No, no can I look? It? Can I do look? <laughs> well, you've already apparently tried pushing it. Can I look? No, you can only do one or the other. That's a bit sad. You see him clutch his chest. Look, man. Chill, chill. Don't, <laughs> don't. Don't. Don't go mad, please. He's... Stay with me. You see his eyes rolling back into his head, the back of his head, back of his skull. Psychology check. Psychology check. Psychology check. Okay. I think med medicine check would be uh, more appropriate to this. I I don't care. I got a hard um, scene. Psychology. Um, you can tell he's in stress. Can I try another psychoanalysis? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, he's probably uh, just lost his breath or... Um, uh, Dr. Sanchez, you, as you're studying him, he leans back and just collapses on the floor. He's missing some air. Uh, and his tongue uh, is kind of uh, hanging out of his mouth a little bit. Can I try... Uh, can I try medicine to try and... You know, stabilize him again. You can try medicine. Stop. I know this is a bad idea, but I got a success, and I'm nice. happy for that. 
Um, you would guess that Sanchez just had a fatal heart attack. Oh. <laughs> um, can I try first aid to, you know, not have him have a heart attack? Uh, or he's, already dead. he's already dead. Oh, oh. sweet. Oh, so sweet. So, this guy is dead. Like, what do you mean he's, he's, oh, he's yes. dead? He is like beyond dead. Because the gun is the only thing in my hand, uh, I would I would slam the, the gun uh, down to the floor uh, and curse while doing so. So I drop something and say, "Oh fuck it!" Yo, calm down. I I really don't want a bullet lodged in my brain right now. Make a spot hidden roll. Jonas. Oh, Jonas. Jonas. Okay. My initiative. Yeah, Jonas did a roll. Yeah. It's... Oh. Oh. Yeah, I did. So I did. you're um, sort of a little shaken by the fat by the fact that he just died in front of you. And you just kind of turn him away, and as you look, you notice a rather large pile of broken furniture along the far wall, and what looks to be a human arm partially exposed underneath the rubble. That does not look good. Uh... Can I try spot? Can I try spot hidden to see where it goes, or what is potentially under there? Yeah, you can go look. Just by just, I'm just, I'm happy. All right. Um, as you look, you see an African American arm, uh, the tattered remains of a tweed jacket. Very oh, I Oof. another murder. I wonder who's gonna get pinned for all of this. Of course, the ones who stay next to the bodies. Well, I'm a doctor, so I can just say, "Hey, I was at the scene, so um, stay away." I once had to arrest a pregnant woman because she was the nearest of the quiet of the crime scene. And she had I mean, literally nothing to do with it. Yeah. I mean... Uh, can I try medicine to see how long the body has been left to decompose? Yeah. Perfect. Very right, fun. Um, not only is there no decomposition, you can actually detect a pulse in the wrist. I think I'm going to be... I don't know. There is a pulse within the fucking wrist. Well, then what are you waiting for? You're the doctor here. Well, and, uh, I'm no tracker. Uh, I would start removing the rubble from the body. I okay. help him, I guess. Um, make a strength roll. Strength. Yes. Okay. How dare they do this to me? Alright, Aiden, you find some inner strength. You begin pulling away large pieces of broken furniture. Jonas, you are struggling just to pick up and move even some of the lightest lighter pieces. Um, you do manage cool. to help, but you're not happily doing much as Aiden just pulling Aiden scrap wood away. Things off. <laughs> um, and after a few moments, you expose the uh, bruised but alive form of Jackson Elias. Jackson. 
I try first aid to try and stabilize him. Okay. Perfect. Um, he coughs and his eyes weakly open. Yo, you what happened? Stay, stay, stay alive. You're all right, mate. Just Ugh. stay alive. You're not dying today. That was a wall, and it hurt a lot. Here, take a rest. Guy and threw me into the wall. One do hand. I have any? Do I have any painkillers or anything that could potentially help? Make a luck roll. You do. I think I've been blessed by God. <laughs> you have a full bottle of painkillers. This is from the doctor. Hey, take some of these. You'll be fine. I hand the bottle over to him. He oh, kind of I hand the appropriate the... dosage. I'm not going to just give him the bottle. He uh, takes the pills and swallows them with a nod. He coughs again. All right. How did somebody have so much strength that you can just pick me up and toss me? Ugh. He kind of shifts and rolls over a little bit. What, what about Sanchez? Doesn't... Don't worry about it. Just... Don't. Alright. Just get some rest. And... Uh... Uh, stay here a sec. I walk. Um. Yeah, Elias is just there. He's kind of closed his eyes and covered his face with his arm. Uh, I, I, can I just, can I move, uh, the body to maybe a place where it'd be less noticeable? Yeah. I, I'd say, make a strength roll, though. That's, that's a bit sad. Can I push that? I would help him doing so. Yeah, you can, of course you can push it. Oh, wow. <laughs> Um, as your attempts to move the body, you notice something about Sanchez's corpse. Um, there's something odd about his skin. It almost feels a little rubbery to the touch. Check. Okay. Yeah. If you want to make a medicine roll. Yeah, um, you're not sure, but you think you know there's something wrong with him. Can I attempt to this? Um, Sorry, continue. As you go in to inspect the body, you can sort of feel that there's something moving underneath his skin. Aiden, get back. What is it? Tell me. Get back. What is it? Moving things. Just get back. I shoot the body three times. Uh, the fuck? It, it uh, is make, a, it make is... an attack roll. In, I mean... I mean... Why? Why did you just do that? We didn't need to do that. Well, there is apparently something in his body, and the woman we saw earlier in the, in the storage room had a, had a wound near her chest, if you remember. I... Oh. That could mean all there, there was something crawling outside. I was trying to remove it, or at least kill it while it stood in the host. I could have removed it. You see, I have a scalpel. And yes, let me let me be honest. I don't think it's what's a close going on. Thing. Why is there gunfire? Jackson Lace sitting up. 
and he sees you holding um, Sanchez's body and uh, out, three this, bullet wounds in. This is Sanchez's not what it corpse. looks like. I, t I tell you what's what's going on. Give me a moment, okay? <sighs> there is there's a reason I am doing this. You people are crazy. No. Okay, I'm I, I on I, right now. I dropped the gun. I would. Okay. Okay. So second analysis first. Yeah. Yeah. You just see um, Jackson breathing heavily and moving closer to the door. Jack, calm down. Jackson, first question: Why are you with us in the storage room? What? Wait with us in the store. Uh, firstly, breathe in, breathe in, breathe out. Yeah. yeah. Slowly, no, I, slowly, I, slowly, I, slowly. No, I wasn't in the storage room with you guys. You guys went down by yourselves. I okay. stayed up here with Dr. Sanchez. All right. Then I tell you what we saw there. It's It can be confirmed if you, we can show you that. Down there, there should be a woman with an open with an open chest, like there was something inside of her, and and uh, he Jonas reported that in the dead corpse of uh, Sanchez, there was something crawling underneath beneath his skin. I was trying to remove it. Yeah, I didn't want him to actually shoot it, but you know, yeah. <laughs> Look, this cultist shit is insane. Yeah, I, I, I don't, I don't get it. There's, that's they're desecrating bodies. Yes, they're desecrating bodies. Look. His eyes look down to the bullet holes. Can I try another psychoanalysis? Yes, you can. What he does that, I would like to, with my with my bare hands, uh, I'd like to check on the body if there's, if I can feel something. Okay. Um. You can't read Elias's face. Can I try to peel off the rubber? Um. Well, I'll go with. Aiden's first, since he's feeling around and he's looking, and he feel Aiden. You can feel more movement. Something is still moving inside of Professor Sanchez's body. Aiden, do not shoot it. I'm not shooting. Um, Elias, do you see this? Do you Elias, see this? Do Elias you know? Nods. Do you know what I'm talking about? This is why I shoot. Aiden. Okay, can I try to peel it off? Yep. Aiden, get your gun ready. I'm aiming. I'm aiming at the point where he's, uh, uh, uh where are you doing? You're, uh, re just removing the rubber, just peeling it off, right? Yeah, yeah okay, uh, I would aim my gun at that point, and at that, at that certain point where he's opening the rubber. Alright, um, as you start to try to peel it off, you realize that that rubbery thing is actually Sanchez's flesh. It's actually his skin. Whoa. Whoa, there's something moving within his skin. Can I try a medic medicine to see if that's normal? Yep. <laughs> it's most certainly not, I think. It's not normal. I don't <laughs> think that's normal. In my medical opinion, I think this is bullshit. You you must be very skilled in the in the art of medicine to come to that conclusion. I know, right? <laughs> Can I try to cut off the skin? Okay, Jack, you might want to look away. This is gonna get a bit gory, but I've done this before. He looks away. That sounds very wrong, but do it. I peel off the skin to try and look what's inside. All right, um, you, can't, you with surgical experience, you can just cut away a portion of the skin and pull it back, 
and you just there's just muscle and organs visible. Can I attempt to check for the moving thing? Um, yeah, you can try. Uh, do I use medicine or spy hidden? Um, you would use spy hidden. I'm still um, aiming, just so you know. Uh, can I fit my hand in there? Yeah. All right. That is nasty. That is nasty. It's disturbing. I'm gonna, put, I'm gonna put my hand in there. <laughs> rubber gloves with me. Wait, can I check five rubber gloves? Yeah, you can make a luck roll. Let's see. Yes. Yes, yeah. there are there are gloves in your bag. I put on the rubber gloves. Oi, Mr. Elias, you probably should cover your ears as well. You know, I've heard a lot of things than this, you know, the screaming um, of, of live people, you know, as I, you know, I think- I don't, know. I don't mean the screech, the screeching of something crawling inside, I'm talking about the, well, the flesh you're, uh, you're sticking your hand in, it's a quite nasty noise. I've done it before, don't worry about it. Yeah, you used to it, but I'm more, and most certainly not Mr. Elias. Alright, everybody, like, uh, cover your ears. Look, just cover your ears. Cheers, ears. Jackson complies. Yeah. Alright. You begin. I put my hand in. You search. Um, at first, everything seems normal. But after, you know, you push a kind of push the liver to the side a little bit, and your hand touches. The spinal column and you kind of expect it to feel like some muscle tissue and bone but you feel something squishy can i pull it out um you try to pull it back and whatever is there is holding on tight i try to scalpel my way through to it all right um make a medicine roll right. what's that new medicine roll Yes. Uh, with surgical precision, your the knife slides in and cuts around whatever is holding on inside Sanchez's body. And you pull back, and you're holding on to what looks like a giant white slug. Oh my! Mmm, that's 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 nasty. That's, 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 that's nasty. That's nasty. Don't shoot it. It's probably nah. really bad. Um, it falls on the floor and kind of moves around like it moves like a snake. Um, it leaves a trail behind it as it starts to make its way across the room. I grab it. I make a dex check. Done. As you reach it, it changes its course and moves away from your grab. Shoot it, shoot it, shoot it. I try to grab it again. Oh no, can I try to stop it? Yeah. You can make an attack roll. Hard success. Alright, you take your knife and you stab it. Um. Die. Die, you wretched abomination. Is it dead? Uh, knife, the blade goes in, and you hear this almost otherworldly shrieking sound, as if you set something on fire. What the fuck? The slug thing keeps moving, back and forth. Just shoot it. Shoot it right now. Right. Okay, uh, I would shoot. Right. Ooh. Um, I don't you, think you shoot it, and the bullet enters part of the slug, uh, and there is a spray of goo as the thing almost explodes. 
my my face. <laughs> uh, yeah, showering everything within a few feet in this white sludge. Duff. All right, Jack. It's okay. What? No. Well, it's not okay to look, but I think I don't know. Can I try his psychology to see if he's okay to look? Yeah. Jesus. Yeah, you wouldn't expect it's okay to look. Alright, it's okay to look. Just I don't expect some really dangerous shit. Um, Elias turns back and to face you and he sees um, Professor Sanchez cut open, uh, blood all around the open wound, um, and then he sees you, Jonas, on the floor with a knife, a scalpel, jabbed into this, what remains of this really weird white worm um, that seems to have been destroyed by Aiden's still smoking Luger. Yeah, this is what we're talking about. Elias screams in horror. Can I try psychoanalysis? <laughs> yeah. Now, who knew that was gonna happen? Huh? <laughs> oh. Okay, Elias is chill. leaning there and going, and just screaming and trying to catch his breath. He um, kind of drops down to the ground and his bunny's sitting there and rocking a little bit. This ain't real. No, no, this ain't real. <laughs> the kerosene is just a story. Mr. Elias, <sighs> please. Calm down. It's all, it was all just a story. It's not supposed to be real. It's not real. <sighs> and he's still sitting there. He's kind of like huddling, holding onto his knees and rocking back and forth. <sighs> it's, it's, oh, Professor Sanchez. Uh, what was that thing? I'm trying to do a psychoanalysis. Okay. Thank you, game. You, um... are able to sort of... you know, get up from where you are, move up right in front of Elias and just kind of like put your hands on his shoulders and study him and talk to him. Yeah. Snap out of it. You sort of study things. You make know him... what things are. <sighs> okay. You know, he takes a couple deep breaths and nods, you know, looking at you. Are there anything else in the room? Okay. This is gonna happen. I'm not gonna I'm not gonna lie to you. This is gonna happen. Death is gonna happen. It might even happen to us. I, I, I've seen people die before. The I've never seen whatever that thing is. Yeah, it's I'm like pretty sure that's... a giant slug or a maggot or something. That's something I have no idea about, but I'll try and figure something out. Just stay here. Right. Um... Please do not blow your brains out. Yeah, uh, I was going to say, uh, I might need to leave in, in the next couple of minutes. Um, I'm being called somewhere. Okay. Uh, um, Elias just is, you know, he's focused on you two, and and you, he's allows you to help him up to his feet. I yeah, I help him up to his feet. Um. Can I try to get a and try to try to study it? Yeah. Medicine check. Um actually this would be a natural world check. Um, that's a bit sad. 
What about the remains of the actual thing? Um, again, it would be natural world to try to study it. Yay. Yeah, um, so looking at the thing, it doesn't have any kind of biology that you would expect it to have. It doesn't seem normal. Um, for one thing, it's too big for what it should be able to do. This is not normal fauna. Uh, fauna. This is something of a worldly. And it's white. It's... Even its coloration is not normal. We shouldn't bring this to the authorities. That kind of thing. I mean, I, I, I understand you. And, and so I'd probably do the same if I was about 30 to 35 years younger. But uh, looking at this, uh, I don't know. They would see this thing. And we think that this, this thing is uh, from one of us three here. Because we are near the bodies. Uh, and in, uh, the, uh, in the storage room, there's a similar case. Elias. Huh? Yeah. You gotta listen to me here. Okay. Do you know anything on these things? No. Can I make okay. a psychology roll to see if he's uh, too scared to recall information? Yeah, go ahead. Same here, because, you know. Okay, 32, hard success. A fail. Wow. Alright, um, Aiden, you can tell, you know, he's definitely shaken, um, but he's not keeping anything from you. He's being open. It's the Do best I have even with the fear, he is being open. Okay, good. At least to the best of his ability, he is. Can I do okay, a luck that. roll to check uh, to check if I have any like psych psychological psych psych something that could help? It. Not causes. Like some sort of drugs or something. Yes. Um. Yeah. Make a luck roll. I didn't mean for that, but yeah, sure. All right. Um. You. Have some mystery pills in your bag that you Can think. Can I try pharmacy? Can I try pharmacy to try and see what they do? Yeah. Not success. Nice. Um, you would looking at the pills and you know reading the little serial number that's printed on the individual pills. You think, yeah, you know, these are probably. Hormones. Meant for a woman. Good enough. Uh, I don't think we should give him these. You're the doctor. I'm just a fire at the policeman. In my medical opinion, this is a bad idea. Wait, so Let yeah. Them. <laughs> In my, I'm just not going to do that. Can I try another uh, psychoanalysis? I'm, I'm very sorry, guys, but um, I really need to leave uh, in the next one, one or two minutes. Okay. Uh, should we like, end it here, then? Um, yeah, we can end it right here. Okay. Yeah. Okay. We've already left, so... Yeah. Well, thank you, guys. Yeah, for yeah thank you. Thank you, Star, for... Uh... Good game. All right, and I will uh, we'll see.